Hey friends, so in continuation to the column design part 1, we will now move on with the column design part 2 wherein we will cover the topics which are displayed on the screen. So here we start with the first thing that is a live load reduction in columns. So as on the screen we see that we have a column file which is open with us. When we go to for the explanation of live load reduction, when we go to settings, design settings, we have an option of live load reduction which is to be checked. If we check that, we have an additional button edit over here which gives us the percentage of live load reduction in front of the number of levels or the number of story that is supported. So as per IS 875 part 2 which gives us the reference for live load reduction for the number of story or uh, as the rise in number of story, we, uh, the reference over here is given. So when we say OK for that, we see that the live load red an additional type of live load reduction is added over here with the column numbers and the level numbers in front of which we can see the percentage of live load reduction. So that's with the live load reduction in case of columns. Now next we can move on to the zone bar settings. For zone bar settings, we have an we have a setting in design settings which says in design settings the zone bar settings which says that for the edge length of 450, 500 and 700 these are the equispaced number of rebars that can fit with this calculated spacing. In case if the required number of bars is 5, we can change the number but it should satisfy the criteria of the spacing. Similarly for 700 we can try out with 7, it's 97. If we try out with 8 and if the spacing goes on, we can try until the spacing goes on reducing. So the spacing, when the spacing is not validated or not within the specified range it will not accept so the maximum number of bars that can fit in 700 is 8 when we said this all the sizes or or any age of the column with the size of 450 500 and 700 will have the numbers as we can see it over here so just to see the implementation of the number of bars that we have allotted See, let's check it for C, C18 which is 450 by 450. We'll go to redesign section option where we can see 5 bars along the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 bars along B. So we see that the number of bars that we have allotted in the zone by settings is actually implemented and we can set the fixed value for a particular edge distance of a column. That's all with the zone bar settings. Next we jump over to the column elevation enhancement as per the IS 13920 specification which says that in the lapping zone of the column the spacing has to be a maximum of 150 mm or if the ductile zone is merging with the lapping zone the spacing calculated for ductile zone, zone to be provided in the lapping zone. Let's check how it is used. Over here I have a designed column file wherein I can check the elevation for column say C1 which is a ductile designed column C5 and C6. So let us check the elevation for these columns. Here in the column elevation tab this is the column elevation for C1. So let's check the spacing for this. Say this is my first floor level between 4.2 and 7.858 wherein up to 705 is my ductile zone and the spacing is T8 at 100 center to center. Let's check it in, check it in the design column tab. Yeah, the ductile length is at 800 center to center. The non-ductile or the regular zone links are 8 at 175. Let's check it. Over here we can see that for the distance of 310 the spacing is T8 at 175. Now comes the lapping zone which is between this line and this line that is for 735 mm. So the spacing is 150 right. Next again it again comes the non-ductile zone and then we have the 
ductile zone or the confining zone where the spacing is again 100 center to center. So in this way we see that the column elevation is enhanced and the lapping zone is now provided for a spacing of maximum 150 center to center as per the IS ductile specification. Further we can go ahead with a very important check in columns which is for the crack width of the columns. In lieu of the same, let us just select the crack width check option over here. We will say perform crack width and the permissible crack width is 0.2 mm for IS456. IS when we say and just auto design it. The auto de after the auto design is performed, we go to reports and just check the design calculation report for say column C1. Here we have a crack wood check. This is the crack wood check as per IS 456. That is a selected code. This is the these are the member forces P, MX, and MY. Here with this feature we have a very beautiful neutral axis orientation that is calculated with respect to the major axis moment and the minor axis moment for a column where the alpha axis is calculated over here we can see the neutral axis angle that is in degrees this is 0.9734 and 0.9605 which is the tan inverse of m major axis moment along major axis and moment along the minor axis we will then calculate its perpendicular distance and the further calculations which uh, will be performed in line with the same so in this feature the beauty of this feature is that we are calculating the angle of inclination for the column that is when we see over here say this is the column and these are the neutral axis which I calculated so when we have P M major and M minor that is moment along LX and LY we need to calculate the eccentricity and then we calculate the alpha angle which is M major upon M minor once the neutral axis in angle inclination is calculated, we will then go ahead with the stress computation. So in this way, the crack width calculation is performed. This is just a small reference on the screen which we see from the help wherein it, the detailed explanation for the crack width design is provided. So that's all with the crack width calculation for a column and these are the results the permissible stress in the steel as well as concrete which are computed. This is all with the design for column features the checks available of the part 2. Thank you.